I'm going to ask for a per more perfect night, about 70 degrees, a little bit of sun. That might come in as a factor in this fourth quarter, I mean, in this first quarter, but uh, it's a beautiful night, and the crowds are going wild early, so. The student sections are packing it as St. Mary's gets the first real possession. Taminovich crossfield pass. That is the younger of the Burleys boys, young Colin Burleys. And Alex Wicks, a man you highlighted, Bob. And there are the St. Mary Saints in their royal blue. How about home now? Home How about home? We can hear it. Can you hear us? Whites is there, the higher seed. And here's Scout Ripley just cradling. And here's Scout Ripley just cradling. A conference there. title game. A conference title game. Gabe Souza turns and gets it back. Gabe Souza turns and gets it back. This is Dunleavy. And this is back Dunleavy. To back to Souza. The camera and sources will appear here. Herbert, Can you hear us at all or no? Cole all playing Herbert, defense on Sousa. Cole all playing defense on Sousa. Bounce off Ian Cramp and, 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 and he goes for the scoop and misses. Bounce off and he goes for the scoop and misses. No, I don't think nerves. I do think right no, away one thing we're seeing. Right, right, right away one thing we're seeing. St. Mary's, I think we'll be intent to do is to try to control the ball a little bit on offense. They did that the other night against Boys Latin to great effect. The as problem is, as long as you stay within shouting range, if you will, shouting about now? range, if you will, Cardinals, of the, you can't can you hear us? You just can't get behind by three or four goals and play that way. As long as they're close, they can play that way on offense. Maybe, and actually, just maybe, maybe just make out all the way anxious because they're so used to filling up the goal regularly. This is Mitchell. What a matchup. This is Mitchell. Mitchell. Against Burleys. What a matchup. Mitchell against Burleys. Shot goal. Great. Shot goal. Abe Lincoln's milk. Abe Lincoln's milk. Robert Hall's off to a start. Can you hear me? From the one thing you never want to do, honestly, Booker, is get Daniel Kelly a shot from here. How about now? The other night, he's probably taken about 20,000 of these in his lifetime from that spot. He's terrific. He can shoot it low. He can shoot it high. That time he drops his stick. All right. Can we go back? We just got on. Are we already starting? Put his stick on the ground. Sorry for the technical problems. Uh, with us, the guy, Coach Mulford and uh, Coach Tinney. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Coach Tinney runs the offense, and Coach Mulford runs the D. And uh, we're excited. For, uh, this will be the first time I've ever watched this game. There you go. It'll be fun. This is, uh, so it should be good. Booker Corrigan, Bob Shriver, bring it to you. We'll bring Dan Aburn in from inside lacrosse in a moment. Bob. What does St. Mary's need to do to find a way to slay the dragon that is Calvert Hall? Play great defense, win the middle of the field if, poss if possible, and be as efficient as they've shown so far offensively. Set for the draw, it'll be Catone against Dudley. Calvert Hall has shown that ability as we see goaltender Schmidt for St. Mary's. Calvert Hall has shown that ability to Bring two or three face-off guys out there. No, just trying to get back. The game. Uh, let's go down to the sideline and talk with Dan Aber. Dan, what is the vibe down there tonight? And uh, we couldn't have asked for a per more perfect night, about 70 degrees, a little bit of sun. That might come in as a factor in this fourth quarter. I mean, this, this first quarter, but uh, it's a beautiful night, and the crowds are going wild early, so... Obviously, when you start in uh, in this game, we really wanted to defend the side that we got because... Um, Tamanovich House and the experience of Sun does get into the goalie's eyes on that end of the where the same Mary's guy was. Young young you can see is we always really Alex pretty much start off in a 10-man ride, and we 10-man rode that as well. And Sam Mary's did a great job of breaking that down um, and, and clearing it off quickly. So they definitely adjust so well. Gabe Souza turns and gets it back. And, and this, this is, is Dunleavy. Dun Back, Back to, to Sousa. Sousa. St. Mary's oh, really one, was a very controlled Sousa. team, and they really liked to, to take Indian the shot clock down to as low as it could. So we defensively had to stay very disciplined. And Parker Bird doing a great job as a senior. Um, really played really well. To great effect. The problem is, as long as you stay within 
And what we try to do offensively is we really always wanted to push it with our guys. And um, we kind of started out with a little bit of a... Um, and actually, so starting maybe, maybe just here. Yeah. All the light so, um, which is a little wrinkle we do with Daniel, uh, number 45, right. Kelly. So, um, this is, uh, this is Grant. Mitchell. He's a lefty. A and they just did, uh, did a little seal and exchange there. Shot goal! And um, Abe Lincoln opened up. And that was just kind of like one of our only Daniel little Kelly. opener plays that From we the do or just did something in that game. And so, good. You can see there's a backside pick him. here. He's deadly. We said the other right there, Herbert let. And he just exchanged it there. From that spot. He's terrific. He can shoot it low. He can shoot it high. That time he drops the stick. Shoots low. and keeps, you know, puts his stick on the ground, but shoots low. And the East men for the far post. Great start for Calvin Hall. There are two stars offensively, Grant Mitchell to Daniel Kelly. I think the biggest thing going into the game for us where we felt our biggest challenge was to win the middle of the field. Um, and I think people would say that St. Mary's had the advantage there with Burleigh and uh, Kid Alex Wicks. And right there, it was huge for us. Um, Sean Barwick and you had Kai Sazaki and our fourth stick middies and our faceoff guys did a, an amazing Alex job in this game. Good round balls and, you know, Which, where their strength was, I think we can't we, our, those guys were the better end of this And that was a massive for us. Because <laughs> <laughs> the kid Alex Wicks is outstanding ski midi, but also great on the wing. And Burleigh was a Player of the Year candidate and deservedly so, so and so it was big for us. Up top, now it's Scout, Scout Ripley, Ripley, 17 for the Saints. Saints. So the Ripley well, and, and Cramp, I think Ian was what, 9 or 22, something like that. 28, he was really their top attack. Nielsen, up top, up top to Ripley, Ripley, now it's... They were very the balanced Navy. in the midfield. The um, back? Good defense. You know, well, defensively, we play slide, very good defense. If you're just uh, not being uh, too aggressive to the goal, Calvert Hall's very comfortable with that. But if you force him to slide, they will come and rotate to you so you can be effective offensively if you're willing to spin the ball pretty quickly. Nielsen tracks down the loose ball. Now it's across the top back with Dunleavy, who took the shot. Fresh. So we slide from the crease here, Saints. and we're doing a really good job defensively just Jackson forcing him Marshall. down the side Goal and taking away his angle. For Calvert Hall um, has that was really good defense, and it was a great decision not really nice to slide there. There was no reason to. They just keep running and Harrison is now a freshman at Delaware, right did a great job, and he's a great example of, uh, I think, what makes us successful is Harrison's an outstanding offensive midfielder. That we asked to play D midi kind of senior mistakes. year, and he did it willingly, and that was huge for us. That's that's all the cross right there. Yes, right there. Yes, they see a mistake and they capitalize very quickly. Saints got a really nice opportunity there that just didn't finish the deal. Credit the great eight and Fritz with a timely stick check. Number sixteen for Calvert Hall comes out, pressures the ball, and now Ripley for St. Mary's. Yeah, a lot of these guys that are on this field. Bob We're all back. Oh, we'll we went back to the beginning. So, if you look at that lineup, I mean, we lost two starting, two starting defenders, one starting attackman. Uh, we had a lot of good midis back this year. And, um, obviously, our goalie was back, which is a disappointment that we didn't get to have the season, but, you know. Set Hopefully, for the draw. For the draw. You know, the guys will learn something from it and we'll get Calvin better from the future. That ability as we see goaltender Schmidt, Schmidt for St. Mary's. Calvin Hall has shown that ability, that ability to, to bring I wish we could fast forward for you, but I don't think we have the ability to do that to get back. I th oh, there we go. Colin Stewart. All right, so we just... Okay, this is fine. So we must have had the defensive stop there. This is Jack Sawyer. He had a really great game. Um, not a great shot by Sauce, but um, great take. So we're 10 man in right now. St. Mary's really well coached team. Victor Lilly and his staff do a great job. They 
really did a nice job of, of preparing for it. But he's still pressured even when you get over. Um, so um, it's okay. I mean, they're going to clear the ball. But it just puts heat on it. Tom Dwyer from start for St. Mary's back in the day. And uh, St. Mary's is going to be a team that is going to really look to take a long time with the clock. So this is a little bit of an invert and uh, did a nice job sliding there and forced a turnover. And that, that was uh, Jake Snyder who was starting for the highest stage this year. He was an amazing player for us. Let me tell you, their goalie was phenomenal in this game. Yeah, I agree. I don't think that was a good take by us. I mean, when St. Mary's beat so methodical, we got to kind of find that balance of taking the, the best shot versus taking the first shot. We can get our looks, but I think it's uh, a little more important for us to, to move the ball there and get a possession of that defense. Big Colin Burleys. Bigger than his older brother, I think. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's a situation where we played a lot of defense, but now we get the ball back. realize he's getting pressure. And, um... Hopefully, um, we're settling it down here. You don't have the ball cleared or in your offensive end. Turnovers are huge. Last quarter of the field, and you get a chance. And this is what we call our 31 set, um, where we like to try to spin it, but sometimes teams won't let us, and we start from the top corner. And Herbert gets to make a read here, and um. He made he, he does a great job of making the correct read. So um, if you see this it's the replay where he's coming, one guy's cutting through, the other guy's dragging, and Daniel tends to whip. So no one would leave Daniel in that situation where they didn't slide. Um, and so when you don't slide and you have an opportunity to score, you can. Plus, um, you know, so he did a great job there and making a good decision. Heck of a shot. You have a great angle on that one, Dan, didn't you? We really don't run plays. So we, we want our kids to – we teach them how to read a defense, and it takes some time. Um, so sometimes early in the year, we struggle. But once they get it, um, it's really hard to defend. So um, here's another defense uh, – face-off guy. This is Tyler Dunn. Um, the other first couple of draws were done by uh, Chris Catoni. Great job by Kai Suzaki. Josh He's Weber. just an unsung hero type kid who um, graduates Kelly. this year, headed to the Naval Academy. And Tyler Dunn, Dunn the faceoff guy, graduated this year as well. And he's going to be playing at Johns Hopkins. So long, long, this is Mitchell our second Herbert. midfield line. And um, as you can tell, we're not wasting much time. And uh, we have a great group of kids, so we had really two phenomenal midfield lines, this team, uh, two equal lines, and we had no issues. Saucy Jack Sawyer on Tominovich. Tominovich is a really good cover defense number three. It looked like Sawyer had a Sawyer. My bad, it looks like our ones are back in, so. Tominovich. This is true at Sunderland, who was a freshman in this game and did not play like a freshman. Um Here's her. Okay, we're in our 31 set still. Gets and we're just exchanging right now. Yeah. Great read. Grant Mitchell. Um, if you go you back with our exchange, which means like Freedom Daniel Kelly hall. floats out the backside. And we Booker. do what we call whip with the other guy who's kind of floating We've high. And you can see Herbert floated Herbert high. I mean, uh, Grant floated high. The and they left Grant and pulled down Grant. Down from 12. If he moved the ball forward, as well to behind the goal, Daniel would have been open also. It's really hard to defend that. You know, you pick one and you're, you're in trouble. You pick the other, you're in trouble. So. Yeah. So, like, if you get the uh, opportunity. So, there's some Bob, commercials that we'll fast forward to. Pass, so, you can see Holt throws it back. And if he uh, threw one more, Daniel's the wide open there because they would have to wheel off of him. And, um, and obviously, you know, you, 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 the nice part is we have guys that can make either, either read and he made the right read and stuck it. one off to Mitchell. Mitchell. For his first, for goal. His first goal. It was a really what, focused what, group. They worked what hard. The Saints um, did not want is for them to make a um, they just were, goal run. We were ready. And honestly, the game and they the were over. confident. I, I hate to say this. that this early in the game, but it's going to be very hard for the Saints to make a comeback getting down five or six to nothing. They can do it, but it's going to be extremely difficult. Extremely difficult. And Bob, uh, speak to your Bob, point. So here's our second line, and, you know, there's really no such thing as a first and second line with us in this team 
And uh, Josh Weber is, a, is good of a MIDI the out there. The night, we, um, and we just ran two good balanced lines and felt really good about it. Situation. That ball came right out of Mitchell's You know, Joel, you never, you, you, right Joel had any, he could put any Weber. lineup he wanted in. Now we're Slip what we call whipping here on our 31. Often, um, Webby should have moved the ball forward or got it back, but because they slid quickly. Sawyer near corner. Sawyer near corner. And he gets a and step. He gets a step. Slip, nice safe nice Schmidt. Safe Schmidt. Got a flag down. I never so saw there's a the flag. And the, 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 right, the penalty was all the way down here. Yeah. They found him 70 yards from the goal. It must have been a foul in the clear off that face-off. Booker, we didn't miss it. It was a slash by number 14. Our extra man was extremely efficient all year. Um, I don't know what we're running right now. I can't remember. The way these guys roll off one another in this man up for Calvert Hall. Great a little bit of an exchange. Depending on, uh, they're shutting us off right now. So when they shut off a guy, we go in what's called a 24 set. Two guys behind, four across. He probably scored here. There you go. And a crease violation on man up. That's a crease. Caught it. He was wide open. That's a big break for the Saints. Mitchell was open. It was a bad pass by Sawyer. The 2 4 worked the other night against Loyola. They scored. Scored a goal on that extra man situation. St. Mary's gets the clear for the time being, and that is going to be a push on them. Calvert Hall manager extraordinaire Scotty McShane. Yeah, they called a push there. Great crew of on Connor. Well, Mitchell was uh, maybe a little frustrated. He fell in the crease down at the other end. Wicks is just, uh, Wicks gets his uh, leg moving. Uh, leg yeah, guy. so we'll be five on five for a little. I mean, it's questionable, but you know, yeah, you can make that. I, I can see how he called that. 30 seconds on this one, so St. Mary's will have a man advantage for two seconds. Yeah, so we're going to be even for about 28 seconds here. I think they score on this one, if I remember. I they may have been. Oh, do we really? Yeah, I knew they brought one in. Like a 3 1 or 4 1. And Kilcoin does slide. Ian Cramp draws it. See, Kilcoin did a great job there doubling the ball. I like that sometimes. When, I think you tend to play aggressive top style of defense. Um, and again, you know, you, you get, I, I don't like that slide because that's a time by Gardner. front to his face so he can make the easy man. read. But got a guy coming out of the box, but it's big Nick Lilly going, going right to the crease. And now we have, now we have a procedural a violation. Procedural violation. Little chin strap little issue. Chin strap issue. Yeah, Sasaki took yeah, one, Sasaki took, took that one, shot right up in the face right mask. So the, the referees, either he had a equipment had malfunction, a, a equipment you know, his face mask. That hat's yep. about 28 right years old. So. Popped a little bit. Uh, shot ahead. How many times have you had it No, I've had it soon once. It's probably like, honestly like six years old. It's just been faded with the sun. And when you're bald, you have to have a hat. They're invert. They invert a lot. An invert is when they put their midfielder behind um, to put some pressure on us. Um, now the ball goes on the ground. Kilcoin. We got fortunate there, there, where Jackson uh, got jumped from behind and made a great play. This is uh, Shawnee Barwick. And um, Sawyer. Great with ball movement. Great ball the movement, um, really good situation, and that's like a, a Sean Barber goal right there. Starting down at this um, other end, Marshall a, with a really ball good save. He gets caught out yeah, of the Good ball crease. movement, good handle by Truett on the bounce Mary's pass. Put it on the ground. Marshall had the presence of mind to pick it up, flipped it up the field. Barwick makes a great play in the middle of the field, turns to the goal. Uh, and the classic bounce four, pass by Sauce break, uh, made it great Sunday handle by Sauce. But the, the nice bottom. part about having a guy like Harrison Ewing, who there's he, we moved him from offense to defense. Loving the Hawaiian And he's great in transition, as you can see. I'm so, you're not wearing one, Dan. What happened? Uh, and then you have a kid like Sean Barwick, uh, who's a great soccer day. player. He's going to play soccer in college, but just a phenomenal lacrosse been player. He can play Division yeah. One lacrosse if you like Right out the Hawaiian shirt, man. Um, Hawaiian shirt, Gonzo Hawaiian Friday. Gonzo Friday. Dave Gell, the media Gell, director for Corgi Sports, Sports Enterprises. So this is Chris Catoni, who's at Loyola University. 
Um, great kid, just an, uh, you know, guy that really we asked to become a face-off guy. Came in as an offensive player, broke his ankle pretty badly, significantly, and then he started focusing on face-offs even more and uh, really just took it to another level. And we're fortunate to have a coach like Jeremy Rollo, who really does a great job developing these guys and got them ready. So I don't like this when we do things like this. Uh, I like it. I like making us move the ball around. But, yeah, so, again, it's hard for us to see the, the game clock. So if there's not, we're in some type of quick little hitter. But it's still off a read with Herbert. Yeah, he's he's waiting for the clock. So it's a good decision then. Get past the first guy typically. He makes a great read here. He goes again. And then here's another one. And they are right now, if you go back, with that read that Cole makes throwing it back, you have Sawyer. Daniel Kelly who's exchanging Calvin out. Up with they're hesitant to leave um, Daniel. So they leave Sauce and they're kind of hedging it. And Sauce just and makes Calvin a great decision to just to hammer it. For the five and uh, goals he did a great job. That same spot. The good thing is if off, they off, did wheel off with Daniel, he would have hit Daniel one uh, more and he would have either had a shot or he would have been able to hit Truett for one more around the back side. So once you're forcing to rotate, you can really, really spin the ball. And um, they were taking the forward pass away, and Herbert really made that play happen because he dodged and blew the slide. And Cole is such a great passer. Now this Saints is typical Burleigh's great ground ball. And uh, I was pretty left. mad at this one. Like? Well, this was like not a good Burleigh's coaching decision on our part. Because um, there really wasn't much time on the clock. The and um, the right we should have just had someone get in the hole to give them, prevent them from getting a quick quarter. one. Great shot, um, my so great shot. Uh, I was not great happy with that. So it just gives them one. And, you know, in lacrosse, the game's a run. So... 5-1 is not great. It's day. still good, but 5-2, you, you know, you're know, starting to feel it a little bit, so you don't want to give them any life. The alums, Brian Burley, St. Mary's alum. Brian Wood. Brian Wood. Hey, let's remember one hey, of the great... So you can see Barwick taking a different like approach. The mole. The mole. But the one thing, too, is we also and have a mindset, let's win the faceoff and score quickie there, too. So... Normally, you got to take the good with the bad with that. And we were winning face off, so it wasn't like a bad decision, but you know, hindsight's always 20 20. The Saints are ready. Yeah, so we were trying to get one more. We were getting greedy. To climb the mountain. There's Barwick. He comes down. Little bounce pass right here. Pass right here. She was Sunderland. He's feeling it. Your summer starts here. Time, here. Time to hit here. Time. I reported an incident <laughs> incorrectly about <laughs> Westminster All High School, right. and I Second was quarter. wrong. Westminster High School is having an amazing season. They're making a strong playoff run. Yeah, so you can see with the sun out. Towson is one of the few stadiums that's at least West Stadium. As they so to have an undefeated season. the sun can really become a factor in, in a quarter or two. It's hard, too, because sometimes you might want it in the first because depending on what time the game is and you get it in the second. Folks, um, I was wrong the way so I reported. I took one person's version of it. Figure it out. And I think Westminster's having a great season, and I fully apologize and was wrong. Now, again, we started the second quarter with what some people would consider our second line. This is Josh Weber. The junior, he was going to, he's having a great season. He threw back. See if my man Christian Edginson can fill it. And as we say, that, it gets they made some adjustments and we made a good adjustment. That's a great just individual play by Truett. Tuesday night. Um, and he found um, really Colin Stewart, who was a senior, just had a fantastic season for us. His terrific and Truett just really smart, kind of used his body. He's up. Yeah, he turns back Not a good away. decision. That guy's in no man's there. land. They should never and, uh, slide to a guy's eyes, especially somebody that's Yeah, you can't slide to him going forward, but you can see him. Drew it just did a good job of protecting him. So him. I have a saying that we use at Calvert Hall. It's indecision is the wrong decision. You know, and if you're indecisive, they're going to pick you apart. So you either got to go or not go. And that hung that kid up a little bit. 
Yeah, we haven't Defensive dodged from X very often because uh, we've been throwing back. So it must be a switch to use and start throwing forward. Um, this is a different spot on the field to dodge from because you think we're, we're pretty good from all six spots on the field. So getting a look from X uh, definitely gave them something else to worry about. From Calvert High School perspective, I don't mind the goal that St. Mary scored at the end of the quarter. You know, they'll, they'll give up one or two and take three or four. You know, that's a pretty good ratio. And this year... There's truth to that, but I, I did mind that goal, to be honest with you. So, so now we would call was whipping, throwing it back. Um, they did a nice job recovering. Now they're kind of setting the pattern, so we're gonna, we'll are gonna we make an adjustment based off of that. Our guys are doing a good job. Now we're in what we call infield instead of a 31. Burles takes his lunch money. And he's now ready to leave. That's all right. Break. Grant Mitchell gets him back. How's Great that? Trail yeah. check. You could almost Great see hustle it by Grant. Right you know, and turn a negative into a positive. And, and sometimes we, we always say it's next play. You're going to turn the ball over. Great You're hustle. Get Mitchell it made a mistake. He got the ball checked out of his stick, and, but he didn't give up. You know, on it. it happens. Got back down there and made a check. Off Burles, really good Burles, defense down there really by the close defense of Calvert Hall. Gave Burles nothing to do with the ball. He ball. got into no man's land. Got into no Mitchell man's caught land. him from behind. Mitchell caught him from behind. 22. Ethan, long shot, go. Feeling it on the inside. Herbert's third assist. Ethan was a sophomore. I can't um, he's headed to Penn State. He's a junior All now. Year. He's going to have a We've massive season this year. About five or six really times skilled kid. Great, great hand. The ball from the um, and he did a great job because he was on the first midfield junior. line with two, I would like ball. to call him his chief, you know, AC guys that you see uh, have the ball in their stick a lot to do a great job there. And he just played phenomenal. and was comfortable without having the ball in his stick and comfortable with the ball in his stick. So he could do so many before. things. Look at this feed from Herbert. From outside the restraining outside line the restraining to his running line, mate, Ethan Long. I will be honest with you. No way Most kids can't handle a pass from up top from down. Most, you know, there's the some guys we would so not. I'd be mad if they threw it to us. The there's, the there's guys like, like um, Ethan, Long, Daniel Kelly, Jack Sawyer, Truett. They all can handle those types of passes. There are some kids that cannot handle that pass, and you have to know who you're throwing that ball. So we teach it, we teach the triangle, we throw it forward and let the attack then hit the cutter because that way the cutter is facing the net, doesn't have to turn his head away from the goal or from the help defense, but uh, sometimes if he's that open, you just make a split decision and that's why we give our offensive guys the freedom to make that decision. He gets to Minovich, and we're going to get a timeout by Calvert Hall. That was a great timeout, whoever did that. No, um... That's funny. Uh, uh, Tyler Dunn uh, is just a really good faceoff guy, and he loves to score. <laughs> so, um, and he does a good job scoring goals, but sometimes he'll like uh, hold it a little too long. But you know, when you're up seven to one, you can burn a timeout early. Uh, it's a tighter game. You know, I probably would have done the same thing, but there's times because I, you never want to go at the end of the half and have a timeout in your pocket. You can't, get, you can't take it with you. Uh, sometimes I I would wait too long or have a couple. I mean, it happens sometimes, but. Booker, they've showed that we a also used it to our advantage because after the first quarter they came out the uh, with a little bit Boys different of a defensive Boys scheme, so it gave us actually 30 seconds to talk about their adjustment. And and we, we are, so right here, we actually switched it to our infield. They're in zone right now, too. So um, we weren't very patient there. You know, and the thing that St. Mary's did in the first half is they really weren't – Sliding off of, of Daniel, and that allowed other guys to, to wheel a little bit, and then we exchanged it. And the beauty of it for us is when you have guys like Cole Herbert and Grant Mitchell, who and, and Josh Weber and Ethan Long, who can make that read. Uh, and the most kids can't make that read, and they make the right read, so it allows us to give us the, the ability to allow the kids to have the freedom just to play. And that's how we like to, to play, is to give, you know, you have the freedom, and you have to learn it. And it takes some time, but there once go, you get it, it's good. It's great play by Jackson. He held his ground really well there. 
phenomenal pass. Yeah, and the other thing we focus on too is whether a team goes man or zone, we, we want to keep it in the same set just so we're not wasting time on the shot clock. Get into a different set or a play based off of their personnel. Uh, we teach a philosophy. We're going to play our offense and make the defense play to our tempo and our system rather than us play to them. So there's the look like they're back in the zone. Not sure yet. I mean, that's a defense. You do like to get into a 14 if we're in a zone for the most part. Yeah, they're, they're staying zone. So right now we're in a 1-4-1. Uh, a one one. Uh, freedom. Great look, great shot, great save. Shot goes wide and a heady backup. Two in a row for Tom Minovich. They do a great job. Their defenseman for St. Mary's, excuse me, Booker. They do a great job getting to the end line off shots. We love when teams go down. We're, we're a great zone team. That's why they call them Maverick. Because we had guys that can really... Uh, we had guys that were really good shooters and good passers um, that could do both. Um, and then you had um, Scout Ripley, which was huge. And then defensively, Maul were pretty much just staying in man to man the whole time here, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's committed they haven't played a ton of defense here, so get down pressure on this. Under Armour Under Armour deal. Event. Event. And that Under Armour. And they, they, St. Mary's had a really good offense. Highest level of play you'll um, see but the good news for us is we've had the ball a lot. And we frustrated them a lot. And I think um, we had a good game plan going in, and the kids executed the game plan pretty well, don't you think? You know? Shot over um, the cage. Almost a possession almost shot there. 30 seconds on the shot clock. No need to rush right now. Yeah, much, much closer to play here. Yeah, much much closer to play here. Yeah, much closer to There's times as a coach you watch your team play and you can tell like they're heavy leg or like they don't have it. Now, Parker did a great job there. He turned them back, and that's what we want. And Jackson held the pipe exceptionally well and, and made a great save. And, um, a save he's supposed to make. Um, Maybe he's getting. Uh, because of, we're putting bit. them in the right spot. Eyes. He's made a couple good saves here. This go if the, their goalie was phenomenal. Was terrific the other he played night. incredible. I mean, he, he kept him in it. But, you know, when that happens, zone, you know, zone. you just got to keep shooting and keep playing. Okay, they're still in their zone. Oh, great save. Oh, another rebound oh, save. Schmidt. Schmidt. Tell you, we're really guy, impatient like right now. Patrick I think we got. Right there. I remember getting on him pretty quickly on this. And look at these guys up when the kids line. were coming off the field, I, the coaches were like, "Here's a perfect where, where 10 man situation. From? We did a great look, job there." Like they, got, they, they made a great play. Yeah, yeah, I, I said you, that the other night. You looked at me like I was crazy. So are specific <laughs> it looks like there's 15 Cameron all guys out there right now. Yeah, they're sitting there down and giving it another group of chance. Just that everyone catch their breath and, and everyone get on the same page with what we want to do at what time on the shot clock. And just have a little bit more structure and patience. Ball in and out of the stick, but at times the other thing too, it's like um, you know. They want to have success right away, and, and they just teaching them to be patient on the zone oh is really Oh, my What an incredible critical. play by Parker Bird. Parker. Parker. Just getting this stick in the passing lane and picking that thing off intended for Cramp. But they're, as Dunleavy's trying to move the ball back behind the goal and swing. St. Mary's runs a little bit of like a drop back zone or two guys right down. And sometimes that can be hard, and our oh, guys ridiculous have to read it. And uh, they did a good job there. And, and Jackson, as a goalie, is a very good right passer. Now. So, he's in such a good all-ball spot fly, right fly, there. Fly. They would get his stick in the hand right Twitter. away. Yeah, going back to the ride with a guy like Burleigh, you want to give him the freedom to kind of roam. So having a drop back allows him to kind of be that free safety type player where he's rotating between two guys and hopefully get a cheap one. As much as anyone who does have Great ball movement. Daniel Kelly from and uh, they were in a zone there, and we were in a little bit of an infield. And uh, just great ball movement. And you know, we like to get our guys in spots where they're going to be able to really develop. And if you look at um, broke his stick and then Grant did a great job and Daniel stuck it. And if you notice, that Daniel's first shot was a low to low. Herbert and uh, to Mitchell, to it's Kelly. funny because we were talking Kelly. the other day. Nobody was basically me, like, on it. I, I have an idea what I'm, my first shot's going to be. He said he just talked to Coach goal. Kinney. And he told him, like, Kelly, go start low to low on this kid. And he did. And then uh, based off of yeah, watching Jeff film and seeing it, and then he mixed it up. Former head coach out of Westminster. He's going to high there. 
Um, but you know, again, that's a ball the movement goal, and balls in and out of their stick quickly. Um, the nice know, thing about this game, you know, we had 15 NHL, goals, of course, and uh, 14 of our goals Wicks. were assisted, as you can see. Wicks so um, we move the ball, and uh, it's not one guy um, that we run it through. It, it, it could be anybody. But what um, I was saying, every Booker, game like on that last different play, guy. So some of these guys you know, will have five or four really goals, nice and the next play. game they might have two. Mm -hmm. The kid guarding um, and broke his stick, so he's got to leave the field. Now they're rotating, and Herbert, he didn't try to throw. Try it's to really goal. nice having, again, like Harrison, who's a guy who a pass all of our d mitties can handle the ball and it makes clearing Kelly, and it's in the back of the really net. Nice. That's a hockey assist for That's Herbert. Assist for Herbert. Uh, again, I uh, again, showing I, the ability, showing the ability to, feed the to feed the ball from the midfield and feed it so effectively. You know, the really thing is amazing. It's eight to one, and I don't feel like our mid is somebody like Herbert yeah. can draw a slide, which he's so about quickly, to do. You know, about action. Yeah, I mean, the Only first the quarter, St. Mary's actually had the ball a lot more than I remember. And then the second quarter is going zone, which is a give and take, right? If you go zone, your the middies you're playing against are a little less tired, but also your defense, who's been playing a lot of D, is Truth less tired. Sunderland. So, Sunderland. Um, it's a bit of a catch-22 because it's able to keep our first-line middies, our top guys out there, a little bit more off there, but it gives your defense a little bit of a break. So now we're in an infield, and like in that last one, you know, they're they're hedging off of Daniel from inside, so he does a good job moving it forward. Guys replaced. These kids are all on their own read. That's just a great catch. Um, they're all on their own read, and so they do a great job of being able he to read and react to the off ball. of each person. His stick out in front of his body, really impressive. Body, really impressive. For a kid that's been playing in the goal for 14, goal for 14 months, months uh, he's months terrific. As you can see, Grant reads it. Look at that save. It's a great save. He drove his hand to the ball. Great catch, great play, forward. great offensive play, great uh, defensive, really great stop save. by the goalie. And that kid, I think, has this only is played Susan. goalie one year. Before Gates this game, I mean, it's really <laughs> remarkable of how good he he had he, he has become and how good he is. Now Ripley now up top with so they're in like a two-three-one set and they're doing a little Susan exchanges a inside and they like to float into a one-four-one here. Skip pass up top, um, which is Ripley one guy up top shot, four across. Walk. And a guy behind Backed the goal. Effectively by Alan Hockenberry. And what they did is they moved the midi behind, and you would short stick them. And we contemplated a lot about do we long pull the midi behind and not long pull their top guy Ripley 17. And we decided just to short stick the guy whoever he was covering because we have that much confidence in our D midi, short stick D midi. Yeah, great defense by Parker. Parker had a really, really great year. This is off ball, Booker. The Calvin Hall defenders guilty of hitting somebody from behind, or pushing somebody from behind, somebody from behind off ball. I think he's gonna get a 30 second. 30 second. Um, as that ball was being fed, he, the guy on the crease the from Calvert Hall, I believe it was number 44. I think we, I think he actually, he, no, pushed, he pushed the, them uh, um, pushed off ball, yeah. if yeah. I remember yeah. correctly. You don't need to be Judge Joe Murphy to figure that one out. Referees for tonight's game. So they're in what's called a 3-8-3, three, 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 three guys up top, and we would do is a string. So you'll see Shawnee Barwick. Well, now they're getting out of it. Joe Murphy inside Ripley shot goal. That's man up. I was mad here because we knew that was happening. Well, and uh, credit that's for never this happened. Ball we had that in play heavy totally traffic. scouted. He's we got knew exactly what they were Parker in. Bird and just all we over were in the right spot. Ripley caught this ball, was able to turn away from the pressure. Watch. Ripley number 17 cutting inside. Really a terrific play by him. Caught the ball under the rest, turn and stuck. We were ball watching, and Shawnee should have been over a little bit more. But, you know. Dan, what are you sensing down there on the St. Mary's sideline? Are their chest puffed out or are their shoulders down a little bit? Well, their shoulders aren't down, but uh, you know, one thing that they're really concerned about is the way things are going at the face-off backs. I mean, Calvert Hall's pretty much dominated all night, despite St. Mary's having two of the more dominant wing players in the entire conference, and like right there. Hundred percent right correct. correct. And now we get bodies and flying. Get bodies We're gonna call that a great ground ball. ball. And they're going to restart it all the way back. Could have been possession, but. But again, Bob, we talked about this on Tuesday night. Sometimes when you're up eight to two, they're not going to give you that. They don't ride that much because they love to get the right personnel in. 
And we get a timeout by, Coach, time Brian out by Coach Brian Kelly of Calvert Hall. Of Calvert Hall. One third. I have no idea how much time is on the clock. 38 One, remaining. Two, two, two yeah. Calvert Hall's had three or four Calvert terrific three shots at the end of the play that could have worked if they were a man or a zone. Yeah. yeah. Cole Herbert plants a catch Cole Herbert with Mitchell. Mitchell. Now it's Daniel Kelly Mitchell. behind now the Sunderland. Daniel Kelly behind the Sunderland. Calvert Hall, 1 4 1. They're zoning it. And one thing those two guys do on the inside is they never stop moving. Yeah, you got to be moving inside, especially against the zone. Ethan Long, number 22, already has a goal today. I'm not so sure Schmidt didn't get a piece of that one, Booker. I think that hit off a helmet. The voice of Dan Aburn from inside the cross joining us. Dan Aburn on that far sideline right at the midline has a great angle on that last shot. Some zone offense here. So we're in a 1 4. One minute and a half inside feed. That's not a good look. No dice. Kelly comes up with the loose ball. Forcing it. Daniel Kelly feed on the goal line extended. Sunderland fights the urge. Really, really and bad possession on our part. Also has and I think a lot of it up top, um, did they, call their second one they were kind of splitting the two. We needed to step in a little they bit have one on time that. Out left according to the scoreboard. 30 seconds, and there you go. Bob, I almost feel like you coached a couple of these games. You coached some title games. You coached some title games. So I think Bob, they were all sides there. Uh, on the point of you coaching title games, how do you – how do you, I don't know why. I don't know why. They must have been offside, Booker. So the timeout was null and void. And now they're offside again. This time riding. So there's a flag down. There's a flag down. Shot here for the Cardinals. They can shoot it. If it doesn't go in, they'll get the ball to start the second half. There's no reason for him not to go to the goal here. Yeah, we call her. I don't think we did a good job on that last Holding the ball, ball here does Holding nothing for Calvert Hall. I'm going to tell you, it does nothing for you, them, unfortunately. The hardest part about down, coaching in these games from 40 yards is the kids can't the hear you right very they well. So, so you know, in that quarter, it's loud. Uh, it's, we, it's weird, even though it's just so – sometimes championship games can be sloppy because um, it's really hard for them to hear. And you know, Chris Schreiber's right. You turn the ball, you know, drop the ball. You just like the rug ties the room together. Halftime highlights and stats tie the game together. Here's your highlights, Bob. Count all heavy like dancing. You know, beautiful pass by Mitchell to Kelly. Eight to two. Beautiful pass by Mitchell. Is a situation where we've been up seven two. We've been down seven two. We've come back in one game. So the cross is a little bit like American basketball. Event. I know the like story about how it was like the McDonald's All American event for basketball. Um, but what I want to talk so about is we just have to make sure new. we're moving so, forward. You want to the stop the take away the runs. You, you know they're going to score one or two in a row. Field, it's when you get to three to four or five in a row, and also we're going to split you're dealing with seventeen, eighteen year old kids. Sometimes they can panic or get frustrated, and you just have group of kids that work that way. Really focus they on those on the guys run. They're, they're very confident and, uh, and another really believed in one another. The tourney location it normally yeah. is here at Towson. Yeah. This year, yeah. joined in the booth by Lee Corrigan. It's going to be again. They're in their 24. Sure. Uh, they shut off. Us. And of course, uh, we've enjoyed a great. I think they shut off. The people uh, I don't know who they shut off. Towson for years. Uh, they must have shut off Cole under construction here. Because he's in that. Usually, he'd be behind the goal. Entire event to one location. Usually, they would shut off Grant, Daniel, or Cole. Boys, boys games, girls and they're shutting Cole off one. Be a great party that weekend. And Dan, I know you're down there listening, and I know Inside and Lacrosse Dan, is responsible for the selection of the senior team. As we see an inside the goal, nice finish by Mitchell. The reason you can tell they you score on the – if they're Dan, shutting off the right, and usually the right side guy is going to score on this. It's really hard you guys to defend it. If you're in it, selecting that so as you can see, they're taking away Cole, uh, Cole Herbert from yeah, well, one really to two, and, long process. and we're just and running exchanges, and, and it's, are, it's, a, you know, it's a hard thing to school, demand on it. And once, club tournaments, with well, the way our guys games, were handling, and really get out as much uh, as you can to evaluate on this particular team. And then once we get you know, to their senior year, like you're, you're this year, we're going to kind of go in with the list yeah, of guys that we think are qualified. And we, guys, so we talked to some coaches. Qualified. We talked to club coaches. Yeah. And <laughs> just kind of trying to get an overall 
feel about you know who really is going to pan out at the next no level while also uh, the one thing that could is ball pressure behind if they force the pass and run, what, Booker, run to the end line that, that doesn't really get his hands free it's still to hard to do because then you're, you're, school guys up you really here. You you here. need to have another guy in to help on the back side and you pressure the ball behind you know you get it to the other side you could be in big time trouble so it's it's challenging very inclusive of giving those, but it's those too, you know when you're winning face-offs like we did give it some more representation it's really Show hard to have a comeback that's something we strive for and you know the Under Armour All-American and honestly I think this season going into our 20 year we had two great face-off guys in Ham McPartland and Ham would have been playing in this game but the game prior he got a concussion in the, in the Lola game um, this is our infield look we're in like a still like a 3-1-2 but we're playing it tighter um, great read Great Speaking handle, great ball movement. The Kelly family just great read. And um, Sauce did a great Schreiber job of finding Daniel on the back side. Bob, that was from his but spot. if you look at Cole he here, Herbert one does a good job of beating this guy. He's done the read well slot shooting head, from the there, guy so head he threw it forward. He uh, goal. Where earlier we were throwing well back. <laughs> now we're throwing now, forward. The and they hedged the from the forward guy. Lee and they weren't joining sliding. me in the booth, the creator of the Under um, Armour All-American game. And our ball movement, Under Armour was, challenged was, you know, to build Sauce got that out of his stick so quickly, it's hard to defend. And, and then and you, you have guys who just know how to find that. space how and get open. How exciting is this new announcement? It's going to be really neat. It's so fun watching this team. There was a guy who cared about the points. Under Armour is so unselfish and the forward of such team players. Aggressive recruiting period for college college. Again, right there, Sean Barwick just making a huge Ground ball against so the top the summer, player. All these regional tryouts have the callback game. And if you make the callback game, that means you're one of the top. This players. is our next line at that tryout. And they pretty so much play equally. Big feather in your cap. We're so back in infield. Know all the kids at that and I think one of the reasons line. why we so decided to run a little bit more infield Richmond, is um, any kid who makes if the they run zone, we can stay the in team. It. You got it. Correct. And that's a very important part of it. And now what they're going to get is through it, you know. Now, they're going to get sports psychology. They're going to get NCAA compliance and recruiting. They're going to get on the field training by D1 coaches. And then, of course, they're going to play great games with all those other kids from all yeah. the other regions that made those callbacks. They uh, we got out of the 10 man ride now. It, you know, the um, but St. Mary's event does a phenomenal job of getting the ball up and out of and the field. And then you mentioned this, this is going to take place in the fall. They had too many men on the field there. Where games are 13 um, to one. Good decision right there These by Daniel. Great cut. From sure. the -go because it's good the best look. The and that's a really good point. Is, you know, um, there's a lot of club games that go really on out there. Every sometimes your best decision is slowing the ball down and sometimes it's pushing it. Um, as you can tell, Coach Mulford doesn't have much to say. We really don't very much. And, uh, um, now and we're so outfield 31. You know, really, you see, and again, cross, they're just not sliding. As you can see, they're the Daniel's inside, and they're not sliding from him at all. And that's just a good read, and they're not. The it's, and they're taking away the forward Cone, pass, and so <laughs> we have guys that can beat your guy. Great look, and just. I, that's I just a great handle Greece, by Josh Weber. And most, you Which know, he's not URL. really open. <laughs> But here's a replay and, of it. But, you know, you have a guy like this is a, and a great pass catch and, by Weber. I mean, He's most people don't throw guy. that pass because most kids can't too, catch that ball. Hall extends it. Webby catches it and shoots it underhand and sticks it. Expanding their lead and they don't lose faceoffs. They great coaching they staff face as we see. They got a lot of coaches down there. That's for doggone sure. Yeah. Joel Tinney. Yeah, especially it was really part of our game plan too. When you have, if you think of basketball and you have a team with a really good three-point shooter, they're a lot less likely to help in. So even in man-to-man, -man, because we have so many guys that can stretch a defense. The crease is actually more open because guys are a little bit more worried to help inside because yeah. they're worried about that outside shot. So we do come in and our crease is going to be more open than if you watched our Loyola game, I don't think we scored a goal in the crease because they were so packed and tight. But this game, they were stretched out a little bit more. So we were able to look inside. And here's Wicks. Steal it away. And here's Wicks. The other thing you mentioned, Lee, was that Under Armour underclass tryout under and how important it is as far as a showcase for a young man. Whether you're in Baltimore, um, this kid or Ripley, 17, I think he starts coming on. He's a really, he's a really, he's a really good player so for them. By a, no means, you know, they had a lot of really good players, you know, uh, and they had a lot of these kids back too. 
get so to those unknown they were, cross you know, again, oh, yeah, they could be sitting here saying, and gosh, I wish we were playing again, you know, they're in a similar situation. And then their, their top lefty attackman, you know, which is a bummer, I think, in the game before against Boyd's Latin, you really hurt his thumb. And he tried to play. And you lose a guy in high school like they did, that's tough. With an opportunity to go play college across. Because you don't have like as much depth as you do in high school as you do in college. I will say, fortunately for us at the midfield, we had depth there. But there's positions that we didn't like on an attack where you didn't have as much depth or wins a national championship so, and was at um, a time in certain areas you just can't afford to lose guys young man named Patrick Spencer came along exactly and guess what he never major. made the Baltimore exactly. team so yes, that's what? how he good the competition is and that's Baltimore Jake Snyder 44 who got a penalty um, list of guys in all my years of coaching and uh, Jake's probably the smartest issues. defender I've ever coached um, just uh, and that kind of you hate it when he got a penalty because and you and I he's like having a coach on the field. He loves to tell that story. And, Corey, you know, uh, the uh, these guys coach are now Corey, figuring out how to deal without time. Jack on the field. So they're in a 1-4-1, one, one, and they tend to like to carry out of a 1-4-1 one, one and roll them out. Gentlemen. A different so they just carried the guy, rolled off the crease. Great to have some now he's coming back in, and they throw back. Great job by Jack and Dave. Thanks so much for that. Your input as far as service on the committee as as is so valuable to so many young men so thank you so valuable to so many young men so thank you Souza takes it away nice catch in the Sousa middle of the field now we have a flag nice flying late in the middle of the field now we have a flag flying late Selling Selling all, all the time hustling to the midline riding like he's supposed to he just couldn't stop his momentum he should really he's off sides he should go down there and play defense he should go down there and Cramp shot, the shot over the cage. They got a shot off. Cramp shot over the cage. They got a shot off. As we are late into the third. I don't think we were not um, on that. We, we were not off sides. St. Mary's going back on the man up. There's a slash on Kai or somebody. And you and I talk about this a lot, Bob. It's if I remember one goal. Right. There's no two-point line. There's no three-point line. One goal at a time. Chip away. Just got to keep grinding the next face. So now we're one man down again. Next clear, the next save. Obviously, the next play you got to keep making. The next play you want to force your way back into this. Yeah, it's a one minute slash, the guy said. So, I mean, I don't know who that was on. For those people that were paying attention while you and Lee were talking, is is they actually, they double pulled, they moved Tom Minovich up top. And so he and Burleigh are playing. The so he quality Calvert Hall middies and they're short sticking number three, the young kid through at Sunderland, and they're short sticking him with Wicks. But then their St. Mary's has a chance and they throw the ball away on man up. And here's Sasaki. And here's Sasaki. St. Mary's with 10 turnovers with 10 tonight to Calvert Hall's just six. And they've had almost double the possession, so it's. Almost yeah, one possession. of those Calvert so Hall goals, the one that Kelly yeah, just dunked down Hall there, goals, the it was created again by there. number one, Cole Herbert, driving, drew a slide through the ball correctly to Snyder, who threw it to Kelly for that step down layup. For that step down layup. He threw it to Sawyer. Here's um, his double pole. There. We have Burleigh's covering so now Grant Mitchell. We we're just kind of holding the ball so we can get all even here. Um, I am, you know, some people question why St. Mary's wouldn't have pressured. I wouldn't either. Sometimes it's hard, and we look right out of the box to try to get into something. Herbert, goal line extended shot. forward, great read. Malone showing up. This is a serious post, Malone. So if it hits a post, you get a whole new clock there in 60 seconds. About a minute and a half ago that went out of bounds, and Calvert Hall was the closest to the sideline. Bob, are you not catching on? you got to call it Post Malone. Bob, are you not catching on? I don't know who Post Malone is, so I'm They're in their zone, which, you know, at this time, you know, hard to run a zone when you're down 11 to 2. I'm wondering where But you can with the shot clock. I'm with the oil. And we're in a little bit of a... You obviously saw my arm Rolling off of 14 there. the NCAA or I'm big a little on or, we're unorganized right now, so they're not in. Friend who lives in the same there. house I do. Yeah. Big save by Mitchell. We have a flag down on a slash. Free possession for Calvert Hall. Yeah, just what they needed. Yeah, just what they needed. Sawyer on a shorty. 
They take great advantage. They see a, it, you know, they're trying to do anything. So now they're just the shutting the shorty. Sawyer will start the what they're doing there. Another save by Schmidt. Schmidt. Schmidt's the only thing that's keeping this thing within their sights. Schmidt with 11 saves on the day. 11 saves on the day. Absolute He played great. They're rolling. The I think they shut off again here because I think we score. And it's no, a little bit, Bob, at some point we're going to start yeah. talking about Calvert Hall and where they measure up as far as great MIAA A conference teams. They've won in dominant fashion, reflective of your 1997 team a little bit. You know, I'll say this, too, for our team. Uh, people can say what they want to say or complain or whatever, but we played everybody. And... Um, there were some scores where we were up we a lot, and then we would sub really, really early, and it would be a little bit closer. Glenn, that's what um, averaging this year. Our starting Herbert. group, this is a little bit of a wrinkle play he kept the ball right there. Um, fed it to Kelly we run this a lot. Um, he, got a he got a piece of that. It's just I a great little fake flip, and then we can flip it. He clearly did get a piece. Most teams scout us pretty well, so they know it. That's the other thing. Calvert Hall, they don't shoot wide much. That's the other thing. They make goalies make saves because they know if he makes a save, they're going to ride it yeah. back. Because they know if he makes a save, they're going to ride it back. We're in what we call our Syracuse formation, sideways 3-3. Three, three. He has a great look. I don't know. Is that Daniel who threw it? Probably my least favorite shot in the cross is when someone drops their stick close to the crease, low to low. <laughs> It's and automatic, and like, goalie so knows fast. where it's going in. And, and Grant Mitchell just make it hammers make one. Take it out on you. What a great shooter he was. Grant really had a phenomenal season for us. So did Connor. This is just a man. Um, this is Calvert Hall and that's saying, just a quick read. This is a house of learned doctors. Oh, that's his early. That's the one he saved. Yep. Beautiful great save, play. Schmidt. Save. Beautiful yeah. save, Schmidt. I think that was true. He threw that pass. So so true made a great, quick diagonal skip and uh, threw the ball hard on the rope and did a really nice job. And, you know, if you give Grant Mitchell his hands free, you're in trouble. And talk about how impressive this Calvert Hall team is. This Hall Bob, you and I were just talking about how they stack up historically. How did they stack up 2019 in the national scene? Well, I've seen a couple teams, Booker, that can certainly play with the Cardinals. I watched the Hill Calvert Hall game. It's the only blemish on the record. Overtime loss to the Hill Academy, who's obviously one of the best in the Hill Academy. Year in and year out, and North America because they are from Canada. I will say, as they're talking about our overall thing, you know, and I will say one of the things that people have to realize when you play a Hill Academy who plays all year round in March, they're in their peak, and we're just starting. So we're always never. Terrific like the games. team that's like worried uh, about Haverford winning in March. Had a great year. We want to like win in May. And, um, and um, you know, we had a couple guys hurt that game too, not to make any excuses, uh, but we should have, we blew it. Who else is in that? Uh, Brunswick um, school and wish we could have that game you know, back. Some of those New England I really feel like this team uh, um, should have easily been unblemished, in, in my opinion. But that didn't happen, and that's part of it when you're dealing with kids. So. I don't worry about going undefeated. I don't worry about the national rankings. I just want us to be the best team we can beat each and every day. And um, that particular game was really frustrating because I just felt like we just didn't play. Oh my gosh, Weber is just this kid, and he's a junior. You're talking about how many guys Calvert all loses. They lose some good ones, but they got a lot of good ones coming back, and he's one of them. They definitely have talent all over the field. Here's Sawyer. And I can streak in Weber uh -huh. from 11 yards out. Weber and he just hammered it. And that is the point where that goalie, you know, he's like, I don't know. Where he shoots from. But I can tell you. He we were playing really well <laughs> this year, feed where I think we could have been better offensively this year than we were in Shot of Vic Lilly. No I mean, guys were playing uh, Ethan Long, Mick Kelly was phenomenal. It's funny, we have been there before, Bob, and, um, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, it's funny because I we had Ethan Long and then when you pick up a tough ground ball, where he was playing attack, where Jack Sawyer was playing. You have three guys from the team slashing you. You know, we had some uh, guys like uh, Mincer was playing really well to, you know, Max Sullivan, Olin Hoffman, 
it's um, rough sled where these guys come at you getting their opportunities. So, then you had Jordan so Ray many places. Uh, on top of having, obviously, Cole and Webby. This is the first back. time we've seen number nine, um, so Justin Mincer on again, the Again, I think we had two really good, strong lines in the midfield. In. And attack-wise, uh, we were... And yeah, Mitchell, I really feel you know, that, you know, Daniel Weber Kelly was playing at a, a different stuff. level than everybody else um, on our, you know, the from pass. out there right now. I mean, Jeez. he was, he yeah. averaged seven Last points the that first three games. In March 3rd. Um, and true it is true it. And, and I think Happy allowing Ethan Long down on attack, he made a great Remember job. And, fans. you know, defensively, I think, um, you know, Coach Wolford will tell you, he probably had the most inexperienced. Inside feet shot going. You know, great play. They're going to give it to him, and they probably should. And, and good handle by Truett. Well, like, like you were saying, you know, J.K. Kelly was a sophomore and probably our top cover guy year. playing great. Um, Brian Kilcoyne was the only returner back, and he was doing a good job leading as captain. And uh, uh, Brian King, um, he was a junior going to West Point, was really Sawyer playing was at a high, high level. Line, Brian gives you a lot of versatility where he can play up no top and down low. Well. Um, uh, and then you have Jack Wrigley, who, you know, happen. was coming back from an ACL that year, and he was playing really great, giving us a lot of versatility, and you can see him starting in down low some, too. Um, and then obviously we had uh, Luke McCall Dan 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 coming up from JV was watch a lot of high school Where does this along with uh, Shawnee Barwick who was back 37. In your um, uh, well, and then our D middies we still had back. We had Kai and, and uh, Aiden Fritz. And uh, it was really fun because Kellen Arthur was really coming on. He came back from an ACL injury. And uh, was playing fantastic like, lacrosse along with the depth um, of scoring, the fact that Dan got, Riley. You know, he was D1 really going to have a huge season for us. And Dan's in right now. He was a sophomore here, junior. That's part about this um, Cavalier team, though, is I feel like they always play like they have something to prove, despite I, being back to back in the MIAA games already. That is an attribute that a lot of really, really good teams have, as we see it go on. I mean, it's a crazy position to think about because your coach considered you did a good job. Uh, if you still get beat, just knowing that technically you're like right here really is, is not far. He should have engaged, really but, at, but we should have gone potentially there. And, uh, especially on 17, on nice he's a good shooter. But again, I can understand why he didn't go because it didn't look like he had a lot of angle. But he re-dodged and he made a great individual play and made a great shot. You know, Jackson was where he needed to be. And, uh, you know, and Jackson had a phenomenal game. He made, you know, some great saves, especially early that kind of made really frustrate you. And that, you know, if it's like five to three, it's a different battle. You know, is that Tominovich? No, that's the yeah. He cleared the ball outstanding, great. Because then that's a hard team to clear the ball. They're a good riding team as well. Very well coached. Uh, I love Victor Lilly. He's a great guy, and uh, you know Brian Burleys does a great job. And, you know, they really made did some amazing things. Now, you know, we are playing a lot more guys here. Uh, as you can see, we've cleared the bench, and, and there's Brian King in there right now as a sophomore. And, uh, um, he's playing long pole, but he's playing down low for us, and he really had a great he was playing fantastic across. So, either done or um, the two he's a kid that you really, um, I wish people had an opportunity to watch play more um, this year. I feel bad for guys, especially like Brian and just everybody, but because he was playing at such a great, great level. Great shot, great goal. Uh, is this Deja Vu over again? So again, Richley did the exact again, same thing. The net with very, and uh, very little bit you know, we made an adjustment and we're like, we got to go early on him because he was feeling it. He's outside the hash marks. You don't see that often, especially from such a low angle. That's something that that kid's practiced a lot. You better believe he's like Kelly at the other end. Maybe that's Ripley's spot. That's his, but it's also his on the run spot, as we see the St. Mary's crowd getting into it a little bit, feeling him a little bit positive about scoring the last couple goals. Again, here's another kid, Chris Catoni, who uh, just Catone stepped up big time back. for us as a senior. And, um, Whips it down the end, and that'll do it for the third. A lot of action, a lot of back and forth. So we start subbing pretty quickly now. 
Um, and in fairness to our guys, you know, it's interesting. Uh, Coach Huntley's philosophy was always uh, it's the other team's job to surrender. And, uh, you know, he would have never subbed, but we subbed here and started playing a lot of different players. And they kept their guys in the whole game, which I totally get. Um, and you can, especially seniors and, and, you know, everything. And I would have probably done the same thing being on the other end because I have been on the other end. Many of us all, all have. Um, and you have to remember that, too. You know, you want to give everybody. And our guys work hard. And they play hard and they practice hard and every kid deserves an opportunity when you give it. And so um and and our kids that were on the other they're getting their subs are good players too. And um gave us great experience and let's continue to compete just from very they would have done some great things, but yeah. Yeah, some yeah, people think when you're up this big and, and a guy that doesn't get much playing time scores and everyone team goes down to the sideline that it's really more poor sportsmanship. But really um, that guy deserves to have his teammates cheer for him just as loud as the starters. So, so we actually encourage that even if it's 14-4 like this and someone scores a goal, we like to cheer on our guys. See, like right here, Cole did a nice job because, again, they didn't slide. They didn't slide from, I think it was Foss down there or it, And they weren't sliding in the leaving inside Daniel on the crease see they're hedging and normally the sometimes they'll leave and if they left Daniel uh, Cole would have moved it forward the UNC um, if they were Cole pinching Herbert, on the weeks, I mean moved it back and if they pinched on it right now, from through it he would have moved it forward try to play and the thing about football, what makes Cole really special career, is sure that, that he's a phenomenal easy. passer I mean he's one of the best passing middies I've ever seen yeah he had like 30 something assists and like 18 goals um, just a great passing midfielder. And then the other thing oh, is scrum he could Barwick play on both ends of the field. Nose in there. Barwick, Barwick was ma amazing. He did a great job. This is a great ground ball, Snyder. great play. Unfortunate, Coach but like says Barwick that's where it defends. you got to have the ball in front of your body and have it hit you, and that just went through. But that was a great play by, uh, by uh, Barwick. Play Division One soccer, Division One lacrosse. If he's if he's asked to make that decision, uh, big time athlete. I will tell you, Barwick was asked to make that decision a lot. <laughs> and uh, I give the kid a lot of credit. He was very patient in his process, and he had opportunities and uh, did not take them on the cross side and just really waited for what he felt was the best place for him. And he's playing college soccer. Fired wide. There's Cramp using his Cramp, not tall, but very and solid. for St. Mary's, 28, really good player. He plays with uh, Johns Hopkins, free. just a strong kid. I had the pleasure of coaching him and a couple also other guys on their team. Um, Wixie and uh, just all the, um, the guys in the Under Armour games. And, um, they're great kids to coach. They were uh, just phenomenal Johnson players um, on their team. Great night for lacrosse. Great night for lacrosse. Especially for the Calvert Hall faithful. Especially for the Calvert Hall faithful. Great job by Kai. Kai Suzaki on the ball is just the first ever the man. MIAA a conference. Three I would have liked him to pick him up earlier than that. Like you don't like giving guys a running start. The shot goes just wide. Slide by Snudge. Well, we're just wide. We've given Calvert all well, enough accolades yeah. this year, they've earned Booker, them. and yeah. last year, and the year before that, and they've honestly earned every single one of them. I think the thing that impresses me the most, they're very talented, but they play hard, they don't give up, they move the ball really well on offense, they're tenacious, riding. You know, they do all these little things that when you add it all up and throw in the talent of Herbert, the Mitchells, Daniel Kelly, Snyder, Truett Sutherland, you know, as a freshman, the defense with with Parker Bird and Jake Snyder. Uh, it's an impressive, impressive lot. Coach Kelly deserves a lot of credit. Truett Sutherland. These guys, you know, the thing that we try to stress is about uh, being a good teammate and just doing whatever it takes too far off. The, what's the best thing for the team uh, and that's what these kids have all decided to do you look at a kid like Aiden Fritz who's going to Delaware oh, next year um, you know he was an offensive oh, no. player that came in and, and we moved into D midi and he embraced it Starting and he's great at it here. and again he, he's a kid that played a lot last year and this year 
He was our I'm like sure one of our Coach leading midfield scorers, and it was from the defense to offensive end. And, I mean, you talk game. about a worker, what talented a kid, great kid. In this um, game. So now you have uh, our third line in, um, front of a good crowd. and uh, you know you have uh, Mick Mike. Kelly at this the time as a sophomore. And uh, on let me tell you, man, us know he's headed to Denver. He's really good. They already know about him. He's pulled right there. Um, Ryan Vermillion, number number seven. Good movement by Hunter. Along with Hunter Tipton. Along with Hunter Saved Tipton. by Schmidt. It's at 14 or 15. 14 or 15. And you know what happens that sometimes great play. That was Daniel. Good hustle. When they're up on the ride. X amount. They continue we're riding to ride hard like the Dickens. Here. That's a. Yeah, whatever. I don't know, but. Um, I think sometimes too is like certain guys that play tend to feel like they have to do more when other kids get in. And it, in fairness to the kids that run in midfield, like you would have liked to not take it there, just kind of move it and let them get a feel. Um, and that, that hurts those guys. So a lot of the fact that let me tell you that third midfield is as good a midfield. The out there when you were the ball yeah. too. It's really good. And uh, we right could have played them more. But the one thing about high school across is that your games are 12 minute quarters. All checking down on his in college, stick. they're 15. You know, so think about it. They play a whole extra quarter of across. It's tough to see. It's tough and to a lot of things is you got to get in on the flow. And, and sometimes the playing three middies in a game, two games, two lines, it's hard to get into a flow. So if the games are 15 minutes for you, definitely would have been able to run three guys. Than I do. Um, again, there's uh, Katoni. Right Ham McPartland would be taking a, a ton of draws ago. for us in this game as well. And unfortunately, he was hurt. Five, apparently. So there they are. This is this is their season. Great hedge. In a nutshell, right here. Great hedge right Just there by Parker. Stop the clock. <laughs> Great ground ball. Stop the clock. I got you to laugh. No, and here's Guy Harrison. Oh, you and I talked about him earlier. Just did whatever it took to help the team. Greatest day of my life. I could die Just great man. attitude. And this kid, three Will Tatomovich, is a great player. I coach in Under Armour. He's going to Georgetown for them. If you think about Daniel Kelly, that's oh. probably the longest he's held the ball in his stick today. Yeah. You know, because he's usually got it in his stick for about a half a second and it's headed goalward. Nothing wrong with being a catch and release guy. Nothing wrong. You got to learn to get yourself in the right position. And if you watch this team where we our depth was in the midfield, so, you know, we could be a little bit more liberal with the subbing with them. Um, and then attack wise, we started subbing more guys in um, on attack. Uh, we were kind of waiting for them at some point with this to like, are they going to take some of their guys out yet? You know, because um, there are some guys that you put in on the second line that can handle it, but there might be a guy or two that, you know, you're going against BJ Burleigh, that might not be the best thing going. Here, you know, so. Or will Tom, uh, Tom will gathers so, and goes um, down. BJ, one of those kids who played on the Under Armour underclass team, really stood out in that Under Armour tryout callback game. And then defensively, we were very uh, young and thin. Uh, like J.K. Kelly was a freshman, and you know he, he'll get into this game, but like his communications wasn't there Great yet now he's phenomenal high level up kid high level player getting a little sloppy he's left-handed tries to stop and throw that ball back across his body mitchell couldn't get it in his now we have a whole hand. second attack in, in right now that was a tough spot too because catch was the lefty on the right side there, and that's a hard handle. Turn turns away from the pressure. Talk about a great like kid too uh, is catching. He can great football player, lacrosse player. Um, good athlete, strong, tough. B.J. He's a kid that can handle a lot of uh, good games. Can go to the goal. Really, very, very good player. And he was playing pretty well for us going into this year too. He was gonna he's a kid that could play midfield and attack at the next level. Here in the fourth, 
We will step Here's away, but we got great closure step coming away, up. But we got great it's all closure coming all right now. Up. Yep. It's all covered all right now. It's kind of it's a treat for me. I, I've never watched this game. I can be honest. I've never watched any championship game uh, of any of ours. Oh, and there's a nice play by Hockenberry. I don't know why. I mean, I just kind of been like, uh, not like bad. Just game's over. I'm moving on. You know what I mean? Even win or lose, and so forth. And, uh, I remember we lost go, in 2011, in and uh, I had somebody say, like, hey, you should go play some, uh, watch that game. You might pick some things up. I'm like, I don't need to watch that game. I know everything that went wrong. <laughs> so, uh, learned a lot. And I will tell you, that last game in 2011 had a lot to do with where we are today. Um, as a program, and you can see we had a whole brand new uh, defensive unit in on that timeout. Um, and that's tough too for kids to come in completely cold, especially defensively. You know, I was there as a defender, I played defense in a college, you know, early on in my freshman year. I played a little bit of long stick midi, but got runs in later down the road. Uh, you know, didn't start down low at freshman, and when you get in, you're like cold and just kind of battling. Yeah. Members of this is Ray Glass, man. Ray is the beast. He's one of my all-time favorite guys. Uh, he was just going to have a great year for us this year. He's another one of those D middies. And talk about an athlete and a football player and speed and toughness. I mean, that's just a great ground ball. Great, great, great ground ball. Uh, Spiegel over there. You know, we've got a great pocket across here in Baltimore, but this isn't the only place that plays great. Uh, Jordan Ray's in as a freshman right now, 40. Expansion has been um, and it's a shame because um, you guys would have gotten to see so these kids having great seasons this season. And Jordan was playing great. Um, they're making it really hard for us to move the ball. So many different and, states uh, represented. When that happens, what should those guys should have been doing is starting in tighter. Here's BJ. To then work their way out. They, they were too extended, so it's hard to How get that to happen. So is valued over three hundred. That was tough. Well, two things. Give St. Mary's credit for still playing hard. They've made some of this happen against the substitutions, substitutes that Coach Kelly's got in the game. That's okay. Coach Kelly's doing the right thing, giving his kids an opportunity to play that don't play much. He's got his third title in the bank, and he just wants to finish this game off. He just wants to get that trophy under his arm. Yep. And move on to next year where he's going to go for four in a row. You see number 13, Kemsky. Um, he's a kid that honestly he's playing offensive midfield for us. As we get a new faceoff guy. Then he plays short stick D midfield for us. Jeff we moved him to a pole. He's playing well, let's give a unreal, shout out and he's going to be playing and rotating in as our second yep, pole. He and he sprains his ankle, game the other day. and he, he literally the just got released the weekend of this games, the, these and, games, and, he's been on the um, and did a great job. Today. And then you have the Jack Wrigley right there, 42. He's at West Point, really good player. Tore his ACL in the previous summer. Headed Ducks to West shoulder, Point, you know, he's covering a high level kid and he was having a great season um, for us this year. And it's a bummer because a kid like him, who doesn't have an opportunity to play his senior year and really show what he's made of is, is hard. Um, again, here's Ray Glass. You're not going to beat Ray. Souza, wines and fires. And these Just are, guys, there's Kepsky. I mean, if you get, look at he has never played with a long pole before. For <laughs> Until about four to about four, two or three weeks ago, playing great. Um, now here we did put our Cal first Hall, man down unit in. Talked about him earlier. Um, had his knee for a second. Just because it, it, it's year. really hard to put the ice kids. They didn't get Yo, one Ohio rep State against their extra man, and um, that's a tough put situation to put it in. And, and, and really, it's a situation that's not going to end well. <laughs> And Bird are obviously part of their first string defense. Obviously part of their first string defense. And here playing man down with Kazaki. And here playing man Suzaki. down with Kazaki. Nice look. Kazaki. Ripley nice going look. for number Good four. Good skip. Ripley going for number four. Letting it go. Ripley. Yeah, he's the I think we have Luke Downs in there right now. Um, 
No, really? I know we played a lot of goalies. Did we play our full in this game? Uh, Luke is a uh, – He's going to Towson. The, uh, he was yeah, playing SAMI, excellent, and we had two uh, other goalies. We've been we're very uh, with uh, Tommy Lubin, who's uh, finished his sophomore year, and um, and again his brother Matt is uh, was a senior D midi for us this era. year, and, and he was playing great. He just came back from hockey, and uh, just was unreal. Um, so just getting better and better. He was just about to get more reps too. It's it's a bummer. Um, that was probably the deepest position we had. Had was the midi this 2020 schedule. season. Shot uh, we we honestly were like Tell us more about those and then after that we're not anymore. We only had one of my two young kids back and Liam Cameron and uh, Dan Riley game over on varsity. And, um, I'm excited about Liam. Um, probably one of the best athletes I've seen. Can fly, run, and a great total kid. Great, great kid. I'm bringing up BL, um, but it goes back to 72. Calvert Hall was undefeated. With so it's 15-7. We're extra. And when you're extra man in this type of game, you're not going to put your first EMO unit back on. Yeah, it's a little different situation. Yeah, because when you're man down. Um, so um, player from Spothmore. Hi. Uh, this is a tough situation for us too as coaches. Like, I feel like these kids deserve an opportunity to try to score. Uh, as you can tell, we didn't have the ball very much, and they wanted us to turn it over. Um, and now they got another penalty, and that kind of put the game away. Um, I, I try not to go over 19 if I can. It's really the number for me. Um, you know, but I have no problem with that shot or anything like that. And that's Griffin Ackley and number 19. He talked about a kid who can play. He's at LeMoyne and uh, very confident in him. And he just talked about a great teammate. Begin the, the bench great really scout fired up. Player. He was always the best attacker the on the other team and just prepared the older guys incredibly it. well. So now you see um, Kemsky's back on the field, Ryan number 13, nice on extra job. man with the short stick. So it shows you his versatility. And then you have Hunter Tipton, 15. He was just a really great senior, great player. He's playing at Mary Washington. And uh, Kemsky's at uh, WNL. Um, you got right there catching as the ball. He's going to Monmouth. Um, NCAA game the other day. Yeah, I can't see all the numbers, but three out of thirty-nine face-offs and took forty-nine shots. Probably Max Sullivan out there. He's going to um, Mammoth. And, and we're just kind of settling it in. And it's great having these kids the opportunity to be out on the field. Um, fortunately, I've learned the hard way you take your phone out of your pocket if you're going to get drafts. And I so like, I'm going to tell you what. Out. Brian Kelly's uh, never felt better about getting the water poured over him, and now they, they have every right to celebrate. Coach Kelly runs a great, great Coach program. Kelly runs a great, great program. And that'll do it. Your three you know, times every championship is very different, and they're all special. Champs. Uh, you some people ask you what's your favorite the one, what's more than this, or whatever. 60s, early 70s uh, by St. You don't Paul's. love one more than the other. They're just like your kids. All your kids are awesome. Um, the, all your kids are just different. So, um, And it's a blessing. And, and fortunately, we've had some great kids that have come through there, through Calvert Hall. And um, I think the past guys, the, even the guys that didn't win championships, just passed down traditionally what it means to be a great teammate and work hard. and having a coach like Joel and Dan and coach Case Meyer and coach Smith and uh, coach Creighton and J Rollo across down the board to uh, Scotty Rogers. Um, you know, you're only as good as the people you're surrounded by and I'm surrounded by an incredible staff and uh, just like anything else, you got to let them do their thing. And I, I can tell you uh, our guys have all, we'll sit here and tell you so they've learned something from each and every coach and, that they can take on. And our ultimate goal here at Calvert Hall is to help develop our kids to be the best uh, people they can be, the best men they can be, and be, prepare them for the next level athletically, but more importantly, academically and personally, and, and who they are as human beings. And what we always say is lacrosse is what you do. It's not who you are. And uh, it doesn't define them. Um, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's important to them and it's important to us and it's important hopefully to the alumni and to our school. And, you know, we're going to continue to do the best that we can. And 
We're very proud of the fact that we're the only high school in the MIA that has ever won without a middle school. It's really hard. Um, our kids are just kids that just kind of work and do their thing each and every day. And if you saw how hard these kids work um, and understood all the effort that they put into this, um, and that's the hard part about this season is that, you know, these kids put so much effort and hard work into going in for trying to get another one, um, which we don't really talk about. We talk about the process um, and the outcomes just will take care of himself. But uh, I couldn't be more proud of a 2020 team um, than I am of this group. Um, I think our lead seniors and the leaders were amazing. Um, I know this is a 2019 video, but today would have been the championship game. And um, we both would like to think that we would have been there competing for it. Um, and, uh, you know, but, you know, we who, no one could say who would be there. So you never know. But we had a good enough team that, that had the opportunity to, to at least say they could have competed to try to get there. But, um, you know, the one thing I'll say with the virus and I'll let everyone go with everything is that, you know, it just makes you realize how special it is to be a part of something special um, and how God is a God that is a, that loves us, that cares for us and wants what's best for us. And we have to trust him in all things. And in Romans 8, 28, I, and in all things, um, I work for the good of those who love him. And God's going to use where we are in this situation for good. I don't know what that is, but it's for good. And the fact that we didn't have a season is okay because God's going to teach and grow each one of us as coaches, but more importantly, each one of these kids is who they are going to become and use what they uh, missed out on or learned on to help impact somebody else in the future or down the road. So um, all is good. All is well. Uh, support the hall. Support Calvert Hall. Uh, support all the programs from the band to the drama to the arts to – academics to lacrosse and football, basketball, baseball, soccer. Um, I sit here as a, as a coach, I couldn't be more proud watching how hard our coaches work um, from wrestling to um, just the new coaches have done an amazing job there to, you know, coach Fryn and what he's done and, 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 and uh, track. And then you see what uh, 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 with golf, uh, just, with Coach Forrester, you know, talk about a team. They, they, they had a chance to win it this year, and that's the sad part about those kids that work so hard to build, 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 and then it doesn't happen. But that just doesn't happen because of the kids. It happens because you have a coach like Coach Forrester, like all of our coaches who work hard and put the energy in, and you have kids that buy in and do it. And that's the beauty of being a part of Calvert Hall. Um, I'm honored to represent the school as a coach, and uh, I, I thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend it with us. And uh, hopefully you'll come out and support us. And uh, as you go through it, support the hall all day, all day. And uh, we obviously could use it because there's a lot of families out there that are struggling and uh, they could use some help financially to get through school because they're not going to be able to afford tuition or whatever. So please go on the www.calverthall.com slash giving and give um, because, you know, I, I know there's going to be kids that are in the band or in the lacrosse team, or uh, is an honor student that wants to finish out their, their high school and their parents just might have gotten furloughed or laid off because of, of the economic situation that we're in because of this virus. So think about that if you have the resources, you're giving to a great uh, school and your gift will multiply because it will multiply by these student athletes or the regular students having an opportunity to go to an amazing school like Calvert Hall. Um, and then have the opportunity to be able to go to the next level in college, professionally, whatever. So thank you. And I wish you all the best. Thank you.